Hi, this is Ron Moorfield welcoming you to the Enjoy a Better World podcast. Today's podcast is part four of the series on the human energy field. In previous podcasts, I've given an overview about how the basic human energy field consists of the nadis and the mental, emotional, and physical energy bodies. I also described the fundamentals of the system of chakras. And today, we'll take a look at the system of acupuncture meridians and how they tie in to both the chakras and the energy bodies. I've always found it curious that Chinese medicine textbooks ignore the subject of the system of chakras. After all, the two systems are about energy in the human body, so it seems that they should be linked together. And that's particularly true since there's an important point in acupuncture corresponding to each chakra gate on the body. I believe they are interconnected, and I'll discuss that later in this video. But for now, I want to discuss the acupuncture meridians. At the outset, it's important to realize that Chinese medicine is the oldest form of continuously practiced and documented medicine in the world today. And I want to emphasize the word documented because there's a tendency for people in the West to discount Chinese medicine as unscientific. But that's far from the case. The Chinese were composing medical textbooks, forming medical hypotheses, experimentally testing the hypotheses, treating people, and observing and documenting the effects of treatments before Socrates and Plato were born, before the formation of the Roman Republic, before Alexander the Great, and before the birth of Christ. They were using the essence of the scientific method when people in the West were burning witches at the stake for causing illnesses. In the West, we appreciate the Chinese inventions like printing, gunpowder, and the compass, but we've been slow to accept Chinese medical theory. In China today, traditional Chinese medicine is practiced side by side with Western forms of medicine. And most people would be surprised to learn that overall, the two approaches are about equally effective at treating illness. Chinese medicine is much more effective for prevention and chronic ailments. There are thousands of scientific articles written about Chinese medicine every year. But the problem is that there aren't enough people in the West who can read Chinese to translate them. And the dilemma is that it's difficult for Western taught people to appreciate Chinese medicine because it comes from a completely different point of view than Western medicine. In the West, the major focus is on chemistry and biology. Western science talks about amino acids, DNA, cells, enzymes, and similar sorts of things. On the other hand, the Chinese approach focuses on the qi and the flow of energy in the body. And as a result, Chinese medicine is based on a different set of fundamental principles. First, harmony and health are natural. It's normal for human beings to be balanced within themselves and in a harmonious balance with nature. That's how the world is designed to work. Natural health and well-being arise from this natural state of harmony. And this harmony is a balance between the qi energy within each person and the chi of the universe as a whole. Disease, and I want you to notice that I've spelled this to indicate a lack of ease. Anyway, disease arises when the natural harmony is disturbed. So, when the internal balance of energy or the balance of energy between man and the environment is disturbed, then there is dis-ease. When the body is experiencing dis-ease, the obvious and natural approach is to restore the ease in the body by recovering the natural state of harmony, balance, and health. And finally, energy precedes matter. Dis-ease appears first in the chi energy of the body and then in the physical body. In fact, disease cannot be cured unless the energy imbalance is corrected. Even in the case of a traumatic injury like a broken bone, the proper balance of qi can dramatically benefit the healing process. And energy balance is maintained through proper diet, 
proper weight, proper exercise, proper relaxation, and energy balancing treatments. Chinese medicine treats the balance of energy in the body through the use of what are described as rivers of qi energy called the 12 main meridians. In English, these meridians are named after the physical organ that they infuse with energy. For example, the heart meridian, the lung meridian, and the kidney meridian. And actually, the 12 main meridians form one continuous river of qi flowing throughout the entire body because the meridians actually flow into each other. The lung meridian flows into the large intestine meridian, that flows into the stomach meridian, then that flows into the next and the next, and finally it all returns to the lung meridian. So the qi flows in one massive circular energy pathway throughout the entire body. In future podcasts, I'll discuss each individual meridian and discuss its flow. It turns out that there are four main reasons for energy disease in the main meridians. There can be too little qi flowing in the meridian. There can be too much energy flowing in the meridian. The meridian can be blocked or the qi can be flowing in the wrong opposite direction. Those are the conditions that need to be corrected. And the treatment approaches are simple. For example, if there's insufficient qi in the meridian, then you increase it. And that's where some other types of meridians come into play. In addition to the 12 main meridians are eight extraordinary meridians, also known as vessels of qi or reservoirs of qi. The name here is particularly important because the emphasis is on the storage of qi as opposed to the flowing of qi. Now think about the metaphor. A water reservoir holds a volume of water. There is some flow of water in the reservoir, but mainly the water is being stored. The water in a river does flow it isn't being stored. And at times there may be a need for more water in the river. In that case, the gates to the dam are opened and more water flows from the reservoir into the river. At other times the river needs less water and the gates to the dam are closed, so less water flows into the river. And Chinese medicine, particularly in its esoteric forms, talks of the relationship between the extraordinary meridians and the main meridians in much the same way as rivers and reservoirs. There are points of connection between the two types of meridians and energy flows back and forth as needed. The interesting thing is that the two most important qi reservoirs lie along the vertical midline of the front and back of the body and have important acupuncture treatment points that correspond exactly to the locations of the chakra gates on the body. Well, that's no coincidence and esoteric acupuncture does, in fact, have techniques to work with the chakras in the body. That observation brings us to a unified human energy field model that kind of puts things all together. Now, I want to be clear that this is not the model taught in traditional Chinese medicine textbooks. However, I've noticed that it's a model that many people who practice both oriental and energetic medicine feel quite comfortable with. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to discuss the information flow from the universe to the human being, but do keep in mind that it really flows in both directions. Qi information flows back and forth from the universe through the main Shishumna channel. This is like the 10,000 volt power line. Energetic information of all frequencies and types is flowing through this channel. But just like you can't plug in a TV to a 10,000 volt power line, the body parts can't plug in to the Shishumna channel directly. To solve that problem, the chakras filter the energy in the Shishumna channel into specific frequencies and make those frequencies available in the eight extraordinary meridians. The diagram here shows only one extraordinary meridian, but the energy information goes to all eight, and it's stored there. Acupuncture points in the extraordinary meridians further tune and refine the energy stored in the meridians, but that's not shown in the diagram. And the extraordinary meridians feed energy information into the 12 main meridians as needed through the points of energetic connection. For simplicity, only four meridians are shown in the diagram. And finally, in the main meridians, the acupuncture points refine and filter 
the information even more and take this refined information to the various organs and tissues throughout the body. Each acupuncture point appears as a small energy vortex emanating from the physical body and they can be used to tune the energy going throughout the body. And disease comes from the normal balance in the energy system being disrupted. For example, here by one type of information that's too weak. Or here by another type of information that's distorted. And there's going to be more on disease in the next podcast and how it all fits in with the mental, emotional, and physical energy bodies that I discussed in previous podcasts. For more information about the human energy field, take a look at www.enjoyabetterworld.com. This is Ron Moorfield, signing off for now. Have a great day. I'm